So good morning. I'm Kathy Dwyer. I'm the Director of Scholarly Communication and the head of the Dewey Graduate Library, which is our hub for our Scholars Archive, our institutional repository. We're having technical difficulties, but I can speak gizmo-free, so I'm going to. Uh, so openaccessweek.org tells us that Open Access Day began in 2007. And the event was originally a partnership between SPARC, the Scholarly Publishing and Academic Resources Coalition, and students who organized local events on a handful of campuses. By 2008, it had grown into Open Access Week, a global community-driven week of action to open up re access to research. Today, thousands of institutions have events celebrating Open Access Week and Open Access Day, and we are, of course, one of them. So we're so happy to see you here today. A couple comfort notes. There's plenty of food set up in the back, so please avail yourself of snacks during the morning and we will have a break for lunch. Restrooms are through the double doors, ladies room to the left, men's room to the right. Um, and now at this point I'd like to introduce our Dean, Rebecca Mugridge, Dean of the University Libraries. Thank you, Kathy. Welcome to Open Access Day at the University at Albany Libraries. I'm thrilled that you were able to join us today. I want to extend a special welcome to all of our speakers who will highlight open access activities on campus, SUNY-wide, and elsewhere. Open Access Week is a global event, which as Kathy said, is now in its 10th year. According to its website, it was developed as an opportunity for the academic <coughs> and research community to continue to learn about the potential benefits of open access, to share what they learned with colleagues, and to help inspire wider participation and helping to make open access a new norm in scholarship and research. Today's program over offers an excellent array of speakers and topics that touch on open access. You'll hear about new models for supporting open access, as well as local and regional efforts to support open access journals and repositories. Trusted institutional repositories, such as our own Scholars Archive, are able to provide legal access to researchers' publications and other research materials, such as audio, video, data, and image files. This is especially important as to understand now when publishers are going after research sharing platforms such as academia.edu and ResearchGate, which may be less careful about respecting copyright laws. I've been asked to plug a new SUNY initiative. Uh, this year, the uh, SUNY system is trying to promote open educational resources on university campuses. Peter Shea is leading the effort here, oh, and he's here in the room, is leading the effort here at the University at Albany. The provost's office and Peter Shea and others are going to work to develop incentives to encourage faculty to use open educational resources in their materials. And so you'll be hearing a lot more about that in the coming months, I think. I want to thank the Open Access Committee, including Elaine Lasta, who chaired the group, Lindsay Van Berkham, Irina Holden, David Dickinson, Rebecca Naus, and Ann Kearney. There are many others who helped make this event happen, and you can find their names listed in the program. Finally, I want to acknowledge and thank the University Auxiliary Services for their generous grant support that allows us to offer the program free of charge to attendees. Thank you again for being here today, and I'm going to turn it back to Kathy to introduce the next speaker.